Can you make a case that President Trump is playing one country off the other to get a better deal individually? I cannot make that case. Again, as you and I have talked about before, we have to credit the Trump administration for taking trade seriously and seeing that it actually has had some very bad effects on some American communities. The problem is the main culprit there has been China. They produce too much steel. They subsidize their own industries. There's a list of things that they have done wrong on trade. So we do need to address that. Instead, what we're doing is we're fighting what is now a seven-front trade war um, that doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, one, it is hard in any case to do a bunch of bilateral negotiations on trade and come out ahead. Two, it doesn't seem like the team that we have that is doing all these potentially bilateral negotiations seems to know what they want or how they're going to ask for it. So I don't understand why we're picking fights with four or five allies when it's really we need a different and better trade relationship with China. Okay, doke Brett, you wrote a column last Friday, and I want to share part of it. The administration is blowing up the foundations of global economic order with these same, with the same mindless glee as a child popping <laughs> bubble wrap. If Trump's economic advisor Larry Kudlow had a gram of self-respect, he would resign. Okie doke, brother. That's yeah, wow. Well, Larry Kudlow mm -hmm. used to be the big free trader until he traded all of his uh, principles in for a position in uh, the White House. It's one of the many ways in which the Trump presidency has corrupted uh, the conservative movement. But it's also doing much graver damage than this. The post-war order is built on uh, the Bretton Woods agreements, the general agreement on tariffs and trade, a yep. whole structure that understood how damaging the protectionism of the 1930s, of, of Smoot-Hawley, of the beggar thy neighbor uh, policies was to world order, world stability, and how much it did to contribute eventually to the catastrophe of the Second World War. And the president is doing this, and, and as Brendan said, you know, uh, you know, Sarah Palin used to say about Obama's foreign policy, he's, he's, he's coddling our enemies uh, while, while ticking off our, our friends. This is exactly what the president is doing on trade. He put off tariffs on the Chinese, who are, as Brendan said, mm -hmm. the, real, the real problem here, at least when it comes to the Canada and Mexico, intellectual right? property. But Canada and Mexico and Europe are our best friends, and this is how we're treating them. So we are destroying the basis of this kind of liberal order that the United States itself was the founder of 75 years ago. Then, Brendan, why do the markets hum along? Well, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen yet. And one of the things that you and I have been watching and talking about for the last seven years is that markets have grown increasingly inured to the possibility of political problems. They're going to wait and see because we don't know. He may change his mind tomorrow. I Isn't think that's that why stunning? markets are coming along. We don't know what the result is going to be. Isn't that stunning that the markets have become desensitized to the words and the rhetoric and the threats of the president of the United States. It's like he neutered himself. Mark, how do you think this is all going to play out in the G7? Well, it's, it's hard to predict. Obviously, many of our allies are very, very concerned and very, very worried about this. You know, hearing Brett talk about Bretton Woods, again, Trump, you know, we almost have to wonder whether Roger Stone is chief of staff, because Trump is still operating out of the old Nixon playbook. We know what happened with Nixon, Nixon shot, Bretton Woods. It's the same thing. Ah. Remember, it's the exact same thing. And he, Nixon did it because he wanted to get reelected. He wanted to play to the base of the isolationism, isolationism that the base was feeling at the time. Trump is doing the same thing. He's trying to play to his base. Um, but he is picking off friends and allies, and it's, and it's peculiar. It's almost like he's using the same playbook he's also using with the NFL owners who support him, gave him money. He's making all them mad. He's making all of our allies mad. And in the meantime, what's Putin doing? New York Times had an article yesterday yes. about how Putin, uh, Trump is blocking football. Putin's running up the middle, going to some of our allies, saying, you know, I can be your friend because he's all over the I place. I love this. I want to share. I actually have the quote where uh, 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 we heard what Putin said. And then here we go. <laughs> it is not our aim to divide anything or anybody in Europe. On the contrary, we want to see a united and prosperous European Union because the European Union is our biggest trade and economic partner. We need to increase cooperation Ooh. with the European Union. Mr. Greeley, those are the words <laughs> of Vladimir Putin.
I mean, that guy is so smooth. He just spent two years trying to disrupt Germany's uh, democracy with lies about crimes in Germany against immigrants or by immigrants, right? It, it's very clear that he absolutely seeks to divide Europe. They've supported uh, rightist parties in different European democracies. I mean, it's such a bold lie that all I can do is chuckle at it. But again, um, it, it is amazing what he's doing. Having seemingly instructed Trump. I, I, I mean, I don't know whether he did or not, but Trump acted like he had instructions to ignore Angela Merkel. Uh, Putin is now walking up to her and offering his hand for a literal handshake. It's amazing to me that this is happening. Well, I spend a lot of a lot of my time in, in, in Germany, and, and the sense of disenchantment and disgust with, with the United States has a corollary, which is that there was always within Germany, both on the far right and the far left, real sympathy with the Russians. You combine that with uh, Russian uh, 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 influence operations, the, the importance of the Nord Stream uh, gas pipeline to mm -hmm. the German and to the broader European economy. And it's amazing because Putin, with this, such a weak hand, an economy that is smaller than Italy's, this is playing for This is such an important point. His yeah. economy is nothing. It's, the ruble is rubble. And this guy <laughs> is rocking on it like he's a world superpower. Be Topless and a wrestling a white Bengal tiger. Because Trump has had an ideological obsession that is almost as old as his mullet. It goes way back to the late <laughs> 1970s or early 1980s. This idea that somehow we are losers when we are in in win-win relationships with either Japan, Mexico, Canada. By the way, you know, someone needs to explain to the president trade is not is not so simple. Uh, the value chain goes through uh, through many many countries, and we export tons of goods to Mexico. Mexico and the Canadians are going to be very smart in punishing Republicans politically by hitting those, especially those ag states, where, which are highly dependent on trade.